Hello, today I'm going to be discussing electrician tools and on that table over there are the apprentice tools, what apprentice electrician men need to start out in the trade. So firstly I'm just going to discuss some of the basic tools uh, in general that we need as electricians. Let's start off with, with the strippers. Now with strippers, okay, you want to go with a pretty good brand. And it's important to note that there's two types of strippers, number six and number five. Electricians use number five. And communication people like Bell Rogers, they use number six. So I'm just gonna show you quickly, it's important to make a note of this when you're gonna go purchase your strippers, that you want to see number five on your stripper and also the digits specifying 18 gauge, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, 12 gauge, okay, and number 10. Okay. But those are the wire gauges that we use. So it says it right there, number five. It's important to know that. You don't want to buy the communication strippers because these it's an expensive tool. Alright? So let's just shift over to this table over here. Some other general tools that electricians use. Uh, strippers, you want to have maybe two or three pairs of strippers with you. A lot of times you lose them, you'll chop a live wire and then it'll short out. Then it's kind of like shardy and you can't use it. Now you're on the job and you can't, you don't have a pair of strippers because you shorted them out. So many times you'll lose these little strippers. They're small, they're like little scissors. And again, you're stagnant on the job. You want to have two or three pairs of you. Uh, pliers, okay, I'll just show you a cheap pair of pliers and I'm sure you know what they look like. Here they are, and when we go to the apprentice table, pliers are, you want to buy good because it's the main tool that we use. Um, so I'm screwdrivers here, we'll get into a little bit more. Uh, just a light duty hammer, uh, measuring tapes. Uh, this is just a basic uh, measuring tape. It's imperial in inches and I'll discuss a little bit more of the importance of buying a good measuring tape. Again, it's good to have like, two or three measuring tapes. You tend to lose them and then, you know, you're stuck and stagnant on the job. Not good. Um, here we have a, just a digital multimeter tester. It can test uh, different variables of electricity like uh, AC, DC voltage. Uh, over here we have ohms resistance when you're trying to find out the resistance in a wire. There is continuity. Uh, you can see the continuity in the wire when troubleshooting. You can see if there's a wire that's severed along the line. And we have DC over here. We can change it to amperage, um, AC, and so on and so forth. This is not necessary. This is more for like licensed people, fifth year apprentices, and so on and so forth, even fourth years. Uh, but starting off first, second year, um, you'll get into very basic um, testers. Drywall knife. Uh, it's just a standard drywall knife. Uh, just some other tools. Allen keys. Uh, there's different, there's kind of like three sets of Allen keys. Uh, I would classify them as small, medium, and large. And, you know, it gets a little bit more into specifics about that. And that's kind of a long, too much to dip into right now. Um, chisels, different types of chisels. Uh, here we have just a, a light duty kind of drill. Uh, sometimes you're doing finer holes with lower voltage. Uh, wires that you're running, it's nice and handy to carry around on site. Uh, charger for a Makita drill. I use Makita and I'm not representing it, but I like the drill or anything like that. Here's just a standard uh, 18 gauge, uh, 18 volt, sorry, uh, drill, and I can use it on the job to bore through just wood and uh, stuff like that for kind of like light duty jobs. Moving over to this table over here, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, dress wear and attire that you need to bring with you. Um, you can probably already imagine that you need a good pair of work boots. 
and it's important to know that the work boots okay need to be a, a green patch approved meaning um, there's a green patch that you'll see on the boot and it'll say CSA okay construction safety association Canadian safety association uh, the Omega sign as well you want these two symbols to be on your boot okay I have another pair over here just to show you and again Ministry of Labor, okay, Ministry of Labor and Safety uh, official is going to come on site. He's going to want to see this, okay. He wants to make sure that your steel toe, uh, steel plate, steel heel, right, you're safe on the site. Hard hats. Now the hard hat, just standard. You don't want to buy a white hard hat. It's more for a super, super uh, supervisor of the job. He wears white. All the other uh, workers wear like yellow and what have you. But I just have white, it's just, uh, it's not by law or anything, but but one good thing to know that you want to buy a hard hat that has like a, a nozzle that you can turn and adjust the setting for, for your head, right, so it fits on nice. You can also add a string onto your uh, hat so it doesn't fly off when it's on your head. Sometimes it's windy. Uh, different types of wood auger built. Uh, drill bits. We have a concrete bit over here. Here we have a crowbar. This is a fish tape. It's nice to have a fish tape on you if you can. If you can bring it with you. Sometimes you're just fishing wires through uh, openings and um, cavities, and it's always good to have a fish tape with you. Sometimes somebody missed a feed, or you're putting in a late extra, and you have it with you. Gloves. It's good to have gloves with you. Um, gloves gives you extra strength. Okay, it's easier to pull wires and work with tools when you have a pair of gloves. Uh, this I use all the time. They're like leather and they're short and my fingers are out for gripping because you, you need your fingertips to touch a lot of different accessories. But you put on the glove and it gives you a lot of added strength. Over here is just a simple kind of like a trouble light. I have a two prong trouble light. It's not recommended. It's not really safe. You need a ground on it. Um, but if you're just using it for temporary lighting for 5-10 minute type of deal and you're in a, like working in a dark attic, it's always nice to have something light like that. Uh, it's better to work with it in, in, a, in a lighted area rather than dark. So in terms of that kind of safety aspect, it's a little bit more suffice. Uh, here we have my skill saw. Now I'll just give you a, a quick tip about when buying skill saws. You want to buy a skill saw that's pretty heavy in weight. You don't want something too heavy or you don't want something light at all. Uh, the reason why you don't want to buy something light is because if you're chopping wood, or you're cutting down wood and a piece of lumber has a, a nail in it and you don't see it, it could ricochet the skill saw, okay, back at you. It'll kick back and the blade will keep turning and it can cut you and sever you, right? That is a very common injury among people uh, when they buy a, a skill saw that's quite light so you want to buy something that's a little heavier so when you're buying when you're cutting down wood okay and it hits a knot or uh, you know a rusty nail in there it's gonna kick back but the weight and you know your grip on it is gonna keep it from slashing you right with that blade uh, so we discussed this table over here, just some general tools, drills. Now, this is the important part of the video, and it's what you need to start off as an apprentice electrician. The main tools you need as an apprentice electrician are here. Now, let's start off with the pouch, the tool holder, and the accessory pouch. You want to buy this good. Now, I would recommend leather. They also have different kinds of materials but I find leather lasts the longest. This is still my original pouch. Um, after being in the trade for almost 25 years now, you can still see that it's my original pouch and these are quite expensive. They're like 30, 40, sometimes $50. And I still have it original. I mean, it's beat up and what have you, but I still last and endure another 20 years, I would say, before I need a new one and you know, it's an expense that I really don't want to kind of deal with right now, but I bought it one time. It's nice leather. Uh, it's soft. It's comfortable. Uh, I can have 
my bits right in here. It's got different pouches. It's got like a holder for the hammer, which is important. Um, you know, and it has all little slots and compartments where I can put my tools, right? Uh, getting into the screwdrivers a little bit. Now, if you're going to buy them individually, <coughs> it wouldn't be highly recommended, although you can. It's nice to buy a set, and you'll have a set, you go with a good brand, and you'll have all necessary screwdrivers in that set. But just to know some of the individual screwdrivers that we mainly use, here's a Robertson number two, <coughs> called a Red, uh, more commonly known as a Red. It's a square head, right? And this is our main screwdriver, this Red Robbie, right? And what you gotta kind of know is the tip of it, you want it narrow. Okay, reason being because you're going to pry open uh, a lot of uh, enclosures to knock in, <coughs> knock out enclosures to put in the wire. And if it's too thick of a head, it won't get in there and pry it open. So you want that kind of nozzle, the end piece of the red robbery, okay, to be pretty narrow. Right? So anyways, uh, red Robertson number two. Over here we have a green Robertson number one, okay, for switches and plugs. You want to go with about three or four different types of flats and or slots, uh, right? We have a three sixteenths by six, okay, uh, slot screwdriver. Here we have a mini me uh, a mini. Uh, screwdriver baby screwdriver I'll call it and it's more for finer work or low voltage hooking up furnaces thermostats uh, different types of dimmers or what have you sometimes you use this um, over here this is a chisel flat it's so what you want to know is you want a big size flat a medium size flat and a smaller size flat three or four different types of flats or slots right and one of them is nice to have to to be able to chisel stuff sometimes you got to stab stuff out or remove something that was previously put in by somebody who did a mistake or even yourself hacksaw hacksaw you bring a nice hacksaw maybe with two or three blades on you sometimes you'll snap the blade just through aggression uh, on the job channel locks go with a good pair of channel locks right i'm not going to, again i'm not going to discuss any brands i don't want to misrepresent any kind of uh, brand out there but there's lots of good tools out there uh, they vary in prices hammer um, with the hammer you want a minimum 16 ounce hammer and hammers are quite heavy uh, this is a 20 ounce. It's nice to have a, a nice mid-sized hammer like mine, 20 ounce, uh, a big head like this one. And, you know, sometimes you got to do hard type of uh, work, like driving concrete spikes through concrete. And you're going to need a nice heavy hammer for that. Uh, it takes a lot of stealth kind of work when you're doing that. And you need the right type of hammer. Pliers. Obviously, you know what pliers look like, but these are the pliers that we use. And, you know, uh, you want to buy a good, decent pair of pliers is a main tool for us, along with the strippers, hammer, and screwdrivers. So the pliers, they should be able to cut heads of nails off or, uh, you know, pull stuff apart, break stuff, renovation work. Uh, you know, even chopping the wire really is, is you know, you want these choppers to be really kind of not so sharp but be able to really dig and sever wires all right side cutters uh again side cutters is a, a, a main tool for us you want to buy a good pair of side cutters uh, to chop wires chisel this is a nice chisel um it's nice and long and sometimes you got to go through uh, many different types of material to bring wire um like wood or concrete or brick uh, uh, rock board, what have you, and this chisel a lot of times can do the job, you, can, you know, without using power drill. Sometimes you're in a situation without power, and the chisel comes handy. Now, let me talk about measuring tape. The measuring tape, let me just pull it apart here. You want to buy measuring tape that has both imperial, imperial and metric um, 
numeric values on on it right you can see at the top it's imperial in inches and at the bottom it's metric okay uh, reason being sometimes you do a lot of custom work and uh, that'll recommend you know using measurements by specification on the drawing or blueprint right and you're gonna use metric for that right because usually it's in uh, metric like in millimeters and if you're using Imperial you won't have those settings and you just don't want to be off spec because you know the whole job will be off and there'll be big problems after uh, over here there's a pair of safety goggles and these are nice safety goggles and it's always nice to have a good pair when you're drilling or doing something that's quite dangerous you put them on um, a drill is not so much recommended, I would say. I mean, as a first or second year apprentice, um, it's nice to have right from the get-go because it'll make your job easier, giving you en more energy at the end of the day, uh, making you pr more productive as well. Um, it's nice to have a drill, but they're quite expensive. It's understandable uh, as you're starting off as, you know, a first year that you don't have so much money saved up as to start off if you're, you know, a young folk like 18, 19 years old. But uh, it's only like a, maybe $150 you can buy a good decent drill and you know it'll make your job much easier on site. Um, over here just have a little kind of like carry all and again have all your red bits green you see I taped them up for easy access your star and what have you. Um, knives I didn't talk about knives but you know you exacto knife over here is my exacto knife to strip Romex and it has a hook knife it's very sharp be careful when you're using it and it's more of a hook knife over here and you can strip it along the side of the sheath the Romex where what I usually do is I strip down the middle and it's a little more easier for me just with practice using this exacto knife um, I think I've discussed everything here's the Allen keys a uh, good pair of Allen keys that we need to do services. Um, and something that's recommended. Uh, magnetic level. I think I maybe have talked about this, maybe not. Uh, it's a magnetic level when you're putting it on meter bases or disconnect switches. You can see that there's a side of it that's magnetic and it'll stick to metal, which metallic objects which we use all the time. And you can see I can hang the level upside down and I can level uh, a panel or a meter base or again disconnect switch something that needs to be leveled and it's important to have roll of tape obviously nice to have so these are basically the tools you need starting out in the trade it'll vary in prices you can go to different department stores for them you can even go to offshoot centers garage sales sometimes you can find a lot of uh, discounted prices used tools but um, basically the main tools that you want to buy nice are your pliers okay a good hammer uh, a nice set of screwdrivers uh, a hacksaw uh, level channel locks again your pouch and tool holder you want it to be brand new you want to buy it one time nice leather um, Allen keys, chisel, all the main tools. Start off the trade, be ready for it. Okay, hope you enjoyed the vid. Thanks, take care.